Spencer here, and in today's video, the Corvette, as you guys just saw, is getting a new set of shoes. So these are much needed because uh, the ones that are on now either leak, this side leaks, as you guys can see how low it is. This one's real dry rotted. This one, the valve stem completely just broke off of. And this one's completely split against the side and is really dry rotted. So it's definitely good that we got these. But some of you may be noticing that this thing is actually already up on jack stands on the front. And that is because, well, one, I really didn't want a lot of pressure being on this rim because it's completely flat. I've actually been doing a ton of work off camera to this thing. So right off the bat, as you guys can see, the seats are now completely different. Before they were really just worn down and disgusting looking and completely ripped. And uh, these definitely match the inside and definitely accent like the black as well. Before they were literally like spray painted like that silver color, uh, but now it definitely accents it nice and definitely really good. And obviously I bolted it back in because we did take the seat out when we were working under the dash. And then I was also having a problem with the brakes uh, getting air in the lines. I went ahead and took off the side that was giving us the problem. I rebled it. Actually, I took off the brake lines, reseated the brake lines, rebled the brakes, and the brake pressure is insane. Like it shot so much air out of the bleeder, it was insane. But now we actually have brake pressure because before we were actually having a leak and the brake fluid kept going down. So I definitely got to keep my eye on to see if it's still leaking because I actually believe it might be coming from the new caliper. The seal for one of the pistons might not have seated or anything, possibly from just a malfunction from factory or from it not driving around and it, the brakes not being used and it not being able to seat the seal. And along with that, right now, the lights inside are not on but the battery is connected and that's because i installed a battery cutoff switch to prevent the battery from dying because we do have some type of parasitic draw and honestly i really don't even care to fix it because i cannot find it anywhere i was thinking maybe it was the uh clock that stays on but honestly it kind of is nice having a battery cutoff switch just for maybe like for theft prevention and everything like that or even if something were to go wrong with the car and i have to cut off all electrical power it is good to have but what i'm going to do right now is uh, just jack up the front a little bit and then i'm going to jack up the rear and put some jack stands under there so all four are off the ground i got to take off all four of the tires bring them to the tire shop but unfortunately my truck is actually getting inspected right now so I might have to make two trips in like a honda or something but we'll get it there but i do want to raise this up because when the back goes up uh this probably is going to come down a little bit and the ground clearance isn't great so probably just going to notch it up one on the jack stand then once we get the fronts off go ahead and raise up the rear and uh get this thing all secured up on the jack stand Uh, right now so what I'm gonna do is start loading them up and we'll be on our way to get the fresh meat put on and I've actually never taken off the uh, rear tire before and I mean it doesn't look too bad the frame is real clean and look at the size of these axles those things are meaty So right now we have seven tires in this Honda Civic. I'm telling you, Honda Civics are literally like just as good as a pickup truck. You can literally fit anything in them. So once we get there, gotta unload everything. I have my dad following me with the uh, last two and then we'll get them all mounted up and uh, remounted onto the Corvette. So guys, I got all four tires all finished up. And before I go ahead and like reinstall them and everything, I might give them just a, a quick little wipe down just to clean them up while they're off. Then we'll reinstall them and uh, see how the Corvette sits. I got all the tires out and back next to the Corvette. So what I'm just going to do real quick, I'm not going to go crazy and polish them right now or yet. Once it's like on the road and everything, uh, I'll probably go ahead and polish them up. But just going to use some soap and water, probably some fine steel wool to try and clean them up a little bit while they're off. And once I'm done with that, I'll throw them back all back on and I'll talk them to spend. started uh, raining randomly it's coming down pretty good but kind of looks like we got a little bit of a storm coming okay now it's actually kind of starting to pour <laughs> honestly the rain feels so good i'm just gonna go ahead and uh start mounting up the tires i'm gonna start with the rear then go ahead lower down the rear 
torque it and then finish the front, see how this thing sits. So guys, the Corvette is on the ground. Uh, everything's all torqued and good to go. And uh, some of you guys might be noticing how high my suspension is sitting right now. And the Corvette likes to do this thing that when it's on the uh, jack and when I lower it, it doesn't like to completely uh, settle. So the only way to really settle it is by taking it for a drive. And then it literally lowers like a sound of like three to four inches. So it definitely will look uh, a lot better once it doesn't have monster truck ride height on it. And this was honestly one of the final steps that we had to do in order to get this streetable. So I went ahead and just brought out the list just to check off that this is all done. So all we have left to do is the power steering control valve, paint, and weather stripping for the T-tops. Other than that, everything else has been done. And once again, some of this stuff I did do off camera like I was explaining earlier. Just because I don't want to bore you guys with like 10,000 videos of me doing every single last little tiny thing on this thing, but I am super happy how this thing is coming out. So what I want to do right now is go ahead and just fire it up to see if the brakes still have pressure. Last time, if I were to do this, if it were to sit overnight like it did right now, <laughs> and I were to go test it again, the brakes would have no pressure whatsoever. So hopefully we're good. Oh, forgot about the battery cutoff switch. You should see the light go on when I engage it. Yep, there you go. All right, here we go. Woo! Fired right up. Making all the oil pressure at idle. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a feel. Oh, yes! There is a lot of pressure. Oh, God, don't die. Yes! There is the same exact amount of pressure as there was last time. Uh, let's hear this cam. Woo! Oh man, that never gets old. Now that we know that the uh, brakes are still working and have pressure, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and kill it for now. And what I also did off camera is, if you go ahead and go onto here to the exhaust, if you guys remember when I was doing the exhaust on this thing, the passenger side actually came completely out out of the middle. So I just went ahead and just threw it back in how it was. And when I hooked up the muffler and everything, when I would start it, this whole side would droop down and basically touch the floor. So what I did to try and fix that is I added a, another hanger right up there, but that helped, but it didn't fix it fully. So I just put one right there and so far it's been pretty good. And then I, what I also went ahead and did is added a hanger right there. And I added a, a couple beads on actually both sides just to keep the like muffler back and then when it goes into the straight pipe just to keep everything in put so it doesn't pivot or anything because the hose clamps aren't exactly the greatest but now that the beads are just on there uh they'll go ahead and just be in one piece but in doing that i had to make sure that the mufflers and where the tips are, are were exactly where i wanted them to be so when I first did the exhaust, they were drooping down a good bit, but I added just a perfect amount of clearance between there, just enough so it wouldn't like burn the fiberglass or anything like that. So now that we have more hangers and a couple welds on there, uh, this exhaust is a lot stronger than what it was when we did the exhaust video. And so far from what I've heard from the inside, it doesn't rattle anymore, which is awesome. So guys, with that being said, I am going to be ending off the video here. And actually the blue on the white lettering is gonna just come off. It's just gonna weather off. My truck had the same exact thing and just within time they just turn white. But this thing is just about ready for the road. I mean, the interior is completely back together. Everything is functioning, brakes work now. We got the battery cutoff switch in. So shouldn't be waking up every morning now with a flat tire or disappearing valve stems. But I've actually been uh, beginning to fill out the paperwork and everything to get this registered and insured. So 
the first drive could be happening on this thing, possibly maybe even next video. So just be on the lookout for that. So much has been done to it since it's last been on the road. I mean, the last time I drove it and the first time I drove it was immediately after first wrenching on it just to give it a little shakedown to see what worked, what didn't. Uh, but now it is a complete turnaround of what it was. And once it's on the road, I can start driving at the shops to get uh, some quotes on, you know, the, like the body work for the cracks and how much it'll cost to repaint this thing. But anyway, guys, with that being said, I'm going to be on the after video here. Follow my social medias. They will be on the outro of this video. Instagram and Snapchat I use the most. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, share, friends, with the channel.